Hey everyone, Haley here from The Foiled Plan. We are diving into episode five in this creative design series. Over the past month, we've been looking at the app Procreate, which is a program available for most iOS devices. If you're unfamiliar with Procreate or you're just starting out, I suggest going back and starting at episode one, which I'll link in the corner over here, so that you can get a handle on the program and then build on your knowledge. Last week in episode four, we learned some shortcuts and hand gestures on the canvas, as well as quick shapes and line tools. This week, we're going to learn the toolbar shortcuts, as well as the layer shortcuts. So let's get started. All right, so the first toolbar shortcut I'm going to show you is how to set your brush and eraser tool to be the same. So I could be drawing with, let's say, the marker in the inking library, and it's gonna look like this. And then if I want to erase, it looks like my eraser tool is set to airbrushing soft brush in my brush library, and it's gonna look like this. But if I want my eraser tool to be the exact same brush that I was just drawing with, all I have to do is first make sure that my brush is selected and then hold down on the eraser tool. And it pops up quick and it says, erase with current brush. And you'll see the difference. Now it's using the same brush, and if I open it up in my settings, I can see now my eraser tool is set to inking marker, which is what my brush tool is also set to, inking marker. Now you can do the same thing to set your brush tool to be the same as your eraser tool. So let's try something different. So I'm going to open up my brush library for my eraser. Let's click on airbrush, because it's quite a bit different. I'm going to leave it on soft brush. Let's see. Okay, we can see that's clearly a different brush to be exactly the same as the brush I'm erasing with. So I'm going to tap once and hold. And now it says paint with current brush. Let's see what happens. It's a different size, but it's just because I haven't adjusted it over here. Now I am painting with that airbrush. So that is a quick and easy way to make your brush and eraser tool the exact same brush. All right, toolbar shortcut number two is how to drag and drop color to fill between lines and how to adjust the threshold. So I have these hearts drawn on the canvas and I want to fill each of them with a different color. So what I'm going to do is tap once on my color circle. I'm going to choose pink for one color. So all I'm going to do is touch that color and then drag it over to whichever heart I want to fill and then release my finger off the screen and the paint will fill in between the lines. It's very similar to the paint bucket tool in a lot of other programs. So we're going to drag and drop. And now that heart is filled. Let's choose a different color. Drag and drop. You can see with this last heart here, the lines don't connect. Let's see what happens when we try to fill this heart. So because the lines are not fully connected, the paint bleeds out onto the rest of the canvas and fills everything. So you wanna make sure that the lines are completely closed for whatever you plan to fill in. So you'll notice this heart is a little bit different. I used a different brush which has slightly fuzzy pixelated edges, it's a little bit blurred, and then I also added a little bit of shading to these spots here. Now when I go to drag and drop this color in the top right corner, you can see the pink doesn't really know where it's supposed to stop. It thinks that it should stop right where the color starts to change you're going to drag and hold. Now without removing your finger from the screen, you're going to see the color drop threshold menu pops up. And if I move my finger to the right, 
that threshold percentage goes up. And if I move it to the left, it goes down. Now, if I continued to move my finger all the way to the right, and the threshold was at 100%, it would fill the entire page. So just be mindful of that. Also, whatever your last used threshold number was, that's what it will be set at when you use the color drop the next time. Now let's talk about the color drop selection tool. So let's say you've been drawing something and you don't have that color saved in one of your palettes, but you want to use that color again. All you have to do is hold your finger on that color and this little bubble will pop up. You can move it around if you want to adjust the color. It's like a little magnifying glass and whichever color is on the top of that circle when you release your finger is the color that your brush will be set to. So the bottom half of the circle is what you're currently set to and then the top will be what your new brush color is. So I'm going to release my finger on purple and I can see that color is selected. Now let's select this pink color and let's say I want to go back to the color that I was just using. All you have to do is just hold down on the color circle in the top corner. It pops up at the top and says previous color and now purple is selected. If you want to go back to the color that you were just at again, again just hold and now it's back to pink. So that's a way to select your last used color. Let's move on to layer shortcuts. All right, so let's learn how to merge layers together. So we can see each one of these four different hearts is on its own separate layer. If you want to put more than one element on the same layer, all you have to do is pinch the layers together. So let's put this purple and pink heart on the same layer together. All you're going to do is pinch and now we can see both of these are on the same layer. If I were to select and move them around, I can see they're going to move together. If you want to move a layer, all you have to do is hold and then you can move it around. Let's put this heart in front of the blue heart and the pink heart. Now let's say I've decided I actually want this heart to be behind everything else. If I drag my layer so that it's below these two layers, then it's gonna show up below those hearts. So how things are laid out in the drawing is very similar to how they're laid out in the layers. Whichever layers are near the top, that is the order that they are going to show up on your page. So again, all I have to do is move this around and now it's changed. You can even merge more than one layer together. So let's take all four of these layers here. We're going to touch and pinch them together. Now we can see everything is all on one layer. Now, if you realize that you didn't mean to do that, make sure you undo. It popped up there and said undo merge layers. You don't really see anything happen here, but if you click back on your layers, you can see now they're back unmerged. Now let's say you want to move around a bunch of layers, but you don't want to combine them. You want to keep this formation and move them around on the page or resize them. You can do that quite simply. So to select multiple layers, what you're going to do is first make sure that you're selected on the first one, and then you're going to swipe right on the other layers that you want to also select. So swipe right, swipe right, and we'll just leave it at just the hearts. So you can see this is quite a bold blue, and then these two are more of an opaque blue. And then if I come over here to my selection tool, now all four of those hearts are moving together. I can resize them on the page, but if I go back into my layers, they're still on their own separate layer. 
Now you can lock, duplicate, or delete a layer by swiping left on it. So if I decide that I want to delete a layer, I swipe left and I can click delete. Let's bring that one back. If I want to duplicate a layer, I swipe left. It's the middle option. I hit duplicate. Now it's sitting right on top of the layer that I just duplicated. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and then move it so that you can see that I now have a duplicate layer. You can also swipe and lock the layer. So now that specific layer is locked. You can see right here, there's a little lock next to what the layer title is. So if I try and draw on that layer, I'm going to get a pop up that says locked layer selection. The current selection contains locked items. Would you like to open layers? You can cancel, you can choose to unlock the layers, or you can open the layers to look a little further into things. You can swipe and hit unlock to unlock that layer. Now, something that I use quite frequently is changing the opacity of a layer. So you can change the opacity of a brush when you are drawing something, but I find that I would rather change the opacity of the layer itself and still have my brush at its full opacity. Then you can change things and adjust things a little bit easier when it comes time for the editing stage. So. To change the opacity, you'd be selected on the layer and you would come over here to your adjustments tab and the first option is opacity and you adjust using that right to left finger motion and that's going to change your opacity of that layer only. But the shortcut to do that is actually when you're on the layer itself, you're gonna take two fingers and tap it once and that brings up that opacity so you can change it that way. If you want to select the contents of one specific layer, all you do is select your layer and then use two fingers and hold on that layer. All right, the last layer shortcut that I'm going to show you is how to use the alpha lock quickly. If you're not sure what alpha lock does, it allows you to color only on what's on a specific layer. So let's show you the long way of getting there. So first let's make this bigger so that we can really see it. All right, so now it's on the top, we can really see it well. Let's make it even a little bit bigger. If we want to select the alpha lock on a layer, we're gonna tap once and then the menu comes up off to the side and one of the options is right here, alpha lock. So let's click that and it's really tough to see but now there's a checkerboard showing on this layer around everything in the background of the heart. So if I have a color selected that's different than whatever is on here, and I go ahead and I start to draw, watch what happens. Nothing on the white. As soon as I get to the heart, now you can see. Now you can see the strokes of my brush. And that is because the alpha lock is on that specific layer. So now that we know the normal way of turning alpha lock on for a layer, let's go over the shortcut. If we are on a layer, all you have to do is take two fingers and you're going to slide right. And now it's alpha locked. You can see the checkerboard background is there behind the heart. And it will only allow me to draw on the contents of my layer. All right, well, that is it for episode five in my creative design series. I hope you enjoyed learning about the toolbar and layer shortcuts. Now that we have the shortcuts, the ins and outs of the program, next week, get ready because we're going to introduce the Apple Pencil so that we can practice learning how to letter in Procreate. I know that is what a lot of you came here for, so we've got enough knowledge under our belt it's time to move on. Please feel free to leave a like, a comment, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support. It does take quite a bit of time to create these videos, but I really enjoy helping people learn and uh, grow as artists. 
and small business owners. So thank you in advance for your support. And uh, I am so looking forward to next week and all of the weeks to come. As always, I will see you on Friday for my regular content video. And um, that's all I'm going to say. Bye.